Okay. All right. I'll go ahead and get started. I know that everyone's time is precious. So um, here we go. Open source data quality. Um, so this is going to be a brief 15 minute talk about open source methodologies and tools that you can use for data quality. Um, we'll be specifically focusing on Python tools and we'll be talking about how you can build data pipelines, even when you're working with real world data that may be human generated and may be potentially messy. So as I like to do when I start my talks, I'm going to start with a cartoon. And in this cartoon, we have Dilbert and his manager discussing uh, data quality. Dilbert's manager says, use the CRS database to size the market. And Dilbert responds, but that data is wrong. His manager says, then use another database. And Dilbert says, that data is also wrong. Uh, Dilbert's manager has the great idea. Can you average the two databases? And Dilbert says, sure, I can multiply them too. <laughs> so what we're going to be talking about is how do we avoid getting into a situation where we are averaging or multiplying data to come up with an outcome? Um, and particularly when we work with messy data, um, how do we build data pipelines that we can trust? Um, so the kind of things that I'd like you to take away from this talk, if there are only a few things you take away, are that when you work with data pipelines using real world data, first thing that you need to do is just get to know your data, ask qualitative questions to understand and use tools like data profiling tools to drill into what your data set actually looks like. Um, second, once you have a strong understanding of your data, make sure that you are validating that data each step of the way in your data pipelines or your system. Um, approaches that we can take for validating our data are we can use API contracts, validation tools, and we can use data anonymization and fake data generation to create reliable tests. So first up, getting to know your data. Before you even open up your IDE, before you start your Jupyter Notebook server, ask yourself a couple of questions and get to know that data set qualitatively. First question is just, how was the data collected? Um, is the data maybe a sample or was it collected by um, people that were looking at documents and then typing out what was in that document into a computer? Was it maybe scanned and there could have been typos that were scanned in? Um, what, what potential issues could come from that data collection? Um, also ask yourself, it may be that you're working with a sample of data, which is perfectly fine, but in a lot of cases, we don't have the luxury of working with a perfectly random sample um, that is representative necessarily of the population. So if you are working with sample data, is there bias inherent in that sample? Um, also ask yourself, was the data set transformed in any way between sort of when it was initially ingested and when it got its way to you? So is it possible that there are nulls in this data set where there should not be? Um, is it possible that some values have been coalesced or coerced um, or malformed in some way? Once you've gone through and you've done your data quality detective work, the next step is kind of what I consider to be the more fun steps. We get to actually start working with the technology and the tools. The first set of tools that we're going to talk about are open source data profiling tools. And a data profiling tool is just a tool that allows you to examine a data set and get some statistics and informative summaries about that data. So my first recommendation for an open source tool that you can use for data quality is you can use Jupyter Notebooks, which many of you are probably familiar with, and you can use a tool called Pandas Profiling. Pandas Profiling is sort of an extension of the Pandas tool, which we, many of us know and love. It's a common Python tool for working with data sets um, using something called a Pandas data frame. Um, and with something as simple as just pip install Pandas, pip install Pandas Profiling, and then literally these four lines that we have here, importing, reading in your data frame as a, as a Pandas data frame, and then running data frame dot profile report. You can get this pretty quick and easy overview into your data set. Um, I'll go ahead and just quickly show you what that looks like with some sample data from the census. 
So what you can see is that just reading in that data frame, if we look at what pandas profiling shows us, it's going to show us things like what is our distribution of age in our census data set? What is our distribution of work class and education? Um, and it will also show us other things like the interactions between our different variables, the correlations that we see, any missing data in our data set, um, and a sample of the first rows and the last rows in the data set. So going back to Pandas profiling, downsides of Pandas profiling are that you should have some knowledge of Python and Pandas. Um, but if you don't have that yet, I would highly recommend investing in um, learning about Python and Pandas as tools for working with data. The next open source data quality, the tool that we'll discuss today is called Apache Superset. It's also a profiling tool. Um, and I have to say that doing some research, I was very impressed with Apache Superset as a tool. Uh, first, their documentation is excellent. And second, for people that may not be very far along in their programming careers or people that, you know, they just kind of want to be able to do things easily without writing a lot of code, it's considered a low code tool where it's very similar to like a Tableau or a Spotfire, except that it's open source and can run locally on your computer. Um, and it gives you a huge variety of visualizations that you can make where you can really drill in and explore your data. Um, so here's a screenshot of what, for example, you could make as an Apache Superset dashboard on a certain data set. Downsides to Apache Superset are that if you are a Windows user, you'll have to use VirtualBox because it's not officially supported for Windows users. Um, and you all will need to set up Docker on your computer and um, get this uh, it's basically a Flask application that will run inside of a Docker container. All right, so next, now that we've taken care of doing our detective work, we've taken care of data profiling, let's talk about data validation. And we have another Dilbert cartoon where Dilbert's manager says, are you sure that the data you gave me is correct? And Dilbert <laughs> responds to him, I've been giving you incorrect data for years. This is the first time you've asked. His manager says, what? And Dilbert says, I said the data is totally accurate. <laughs> so for the first thing that we're going to talk about in terms of validation, before you can reasonably do a validation on the data in your data pipelines or the system that you're building, you need to take some time and actually define what valid data is for those pipelines or for those systems. Um, a concept that can be very helpful for this is called design by contract, which is basically a theory that says when we build out a software element, a crucial part of that is figuring out how that software interacts with the world around it. What are the inputs that it accepts? What are the outputs that it will return? And in terms of open source methodologies and tools that we can use for design by contract, when you're thinking about what valid data looks like as it flows through your data pipeline, you can use something called the open API specification in order to define what your service expects as valid data inputting into each step of the pipeline and what your service will return. Um, open API specification tool that you can use is called Swagger. Um, Swagger is excellent for REST APIs. It defines all kinds of things from authentication to endpoints to like the collections in your REST API. However, it is REST specific and it requires maintenance. So when you're working with a REST um, API, you need to make sure that you keep that contract up to date. If you do end up changing what you consider to be valid data or what you're going to return in your data pipeline. Um, Next, I'm going to talk about async API, which is also an open source tool that you can use. It's not actually for defining REST APIs, it's for defining asynchronous APIs. So for example, if you have a Kafka service that is accepting a certain input of data and returning or like writing to another topic certain output, you can um, describe that inside of async API. It's a pretty new project, a lot more new than Swagger. Um, but I think it's mostly useful as a pattern for how you can think through when I'm building out my data pipelines, what exactly do I expect and really start to just explore what the assumptions are that you're making about the data, because the less assumptions you make, the tighter your data pipelines and the higher the quality of the data that you're going to have moving through them. Validation tools are what we will discuss now. And if your contract is defining what is valid data, 
your validation tools are really what's going to make sure that in code you are asserting that you're getting valid data every step of the way. So the first validation tool that we'll discuss is called Cerberus. In Greek mythology, Cerberus is the dog that guards the gates of Hades. Um, <laughs> in terms of data pipelines with messy real world, world data, you can think of Cerberus as the tool that is guarding your data pipeline. It's going to make sure that when you receive data, that data is actually valid data before the data moves further into your system or your pipelines. Um, sort of pros for Cerberus is that the, the documentation is excellent on it. Um, it also has a lot of variety for how it supports nested fields and dependencies. Um, and it's sort of like a Swiss army knife that you can use um, to, to define, this is exactly what I expect as my schema for my data. Um, another tool that you can use that's also open source, all of these are, is you can use JSON schema. Um, JSON schema is a little bit more popular than Cerberus. And from what I can see looking at their GitHub is more active on GitHub, although they're both pretty active. Um, the huge benefit to JSON schema is that rather than defining your like data schemas in code, you're really defining those data schemas inside of this like highly readable JSON. So here we can see that from JSON schema, we're importing validate. We define the schema using a Python dictionary, which is adjacent to a JSON. Um, and then we just run this validate call. And if something is not valid as per the schema that we've defined, we're going to get a helpful error message that says, hey, this piece of data that you've sent in, this isn't right. Um, the next thing that we're going to talk about in terms of tools that you can use for building real world, real world pipelines um, with data is data anonymization and generating fake data tools. So initially when I started working on this talk, I looked into open source data anonymization tools. What I found is that there really isn't an outstanding tool on the market, in my opinion, for data anonymization that is open source. Um, and my hypothesis for that is that people who have sensitive data that they want to anonymize may be reluctant to hand that data over to an open source tool. Um, however, if you're an open source developer, this could be an opportunity if you can assure others of security. Um, what I ended up looking into instead of data anonymization tools that were open source, I ended up looking into fake data generators because the real purpose of what we're trying to do here is now that we've defined valid data and we've assured ourselves that we have ways to validate that data as it moves through our data pipelines, um, the next step is that we need to write our tests and we can use fake data generators to write tests that make sure that our pipelines are performant, meaning that they won't tip over when they're exposed to stress and that they're fast, even when they have a lot of load on them. We can also use uh, fake data generators to write tests that show that we handle duplicate data the way that we would expect. So if a person fills out a form, 10 minutes later, they submit what looks like the same form. How do we want to handle that in our system? Do we want to create two records or one record? Um, we can use it to make sure that we're handling edge cases. Like, for example, we have a name that's written in non-ASCII. How do we want to handle that? Um, and that we're doing error handling. If we do want something to throw an error in our data pipeline, are we logging it the way that we expect? Are we alerting on it if necessary? Um, those are all the things that generating fake data can help you test. So the first fake data generator that we'll discuss, um, also open source like all of these, is called Faker. Um, pretty good name, pretty straightforward. It's really easy and it has a wide variety of fake data providers. Um, variety of providers includes license plate numbers and phone numbers, um, and I think social security numbers, names, et cetera. Um, it's multilingual, so it supports many different languages other than English. And it can guarantee fake val or it can guarantee unique values. So you can say, hey, I need a million unique names, and it will give you that. Um, you can also customize providers. You can inherit the existing providers and build on top of them. And there is a repository now that's a PyTest plugin for Faker. So you can easily integrate these fake uh, data sets into your PyTest uh, test cases if you have those. The next tool that we'll talk about for fake data generators is Mimesis. And Mimesis is about 10 times faster than Faker, which is its major claim to fame. They're both pretty fast, but if performance 
um, and like the speed of your tests is very, very important, Mimesis might be a better choice. It also allows schema-based generators. So you can, for example, rather than sort of defining your generator in code, you can define your generator through a mapping like this, and it will generate um, data that, that conforms to that schema. Um, there's also a CLI in Mimesis that allows you to populate a database uh, using Flask. Um, downsides to Mimesis are that it only supports Python greater than or equal to version 3.6, and it's just not as popular or as well documented as Faker, but that could change in the future. So in conclusion, uh, thank you for your time. Um, when you're working with potentially messy real world data sets, and you want to make sure that your quality of your data is high, start by asking those qualitative questions and digging into your data using data profiling tools like pandas profiling or Apache superset. From there, define what valid data is in your system using tools like Swagger or async API. Write tests that ensure that you are handling invalid data the way that you would expect to. Um, you can use validation tools like Cerberus or JSON schema, and you can use fake data generators like Faker and Mimesis. And that's it. Thank you.